Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you some custom actions for ripple editing in Reaper. Now, the purpose of this video is not to show you how to use ripple editing or to cover it in full. If you want to learn more, check out this video on the Reaper homepage video site. Instead, I want to go over some shortcuts or custom actions we could use to utilize this feature quicker. But let's first review ripple editing. By default, if we select an item in this project and delete it, it just deletes that item. Nothing to the right or to the left. Or if we move it by dragging it around, again, it just moves that one item. But if we turn on ripple editing by hitting this button once, which makes it look like this, or right clicking and choosing ripple edit per track, now, if we cut it or delete it, it moves everything that was on the right over to fill that gap before and after. And the same thing if we grab it and move it. It moves all the items to the right along with it, but just one track at a time. So if we grab this item, all these items are going to move with it creating a space for adding new items right here. But that's on a per track basis. We could also do it for all tracks. Just hit this button one more time. It changes the button to look like this, or right click it and choose ripple edit all tracks. And with that selected, if we grab this one item and delete it, it moves all the items to the right of it over on all the tracks, before and after. And it worked the same way if we grab it and move it. Grab this item, all the items to the right of it or in line with it move together. Again, to create space to put new items in here. And it'll work the same way with time selections. Let's create a time selection from bar five to bar seven. And if we turn off ripple editing by clicking it one more time, and then we select the track by double clicking the synth loop and going to the edit menu and choosing cut within time selection, it's going to cut just within the time selection, but it didn't perform any ripple function. But once again, if we click this button once or right click it, to turn on ripple edit per track, it's going to move everything to the right of this over. Hit that action, and it just cuts the space based on our time selection. And it'll do the same with our piano or our kick. Deleting that space based on our time selection and moving everything over. And we can do the same thing with all track mode. Hit this button again, or right click it, and turn on ripple edit all tracks. Now, if we do the same thing on any track we choose, cut it, it moves everything over from the right side, regardless of which track we chose, because we're in all track mode. It moves everything over on all the tracks. So that's how ripple editing works. But the one downside is we have to turn on or hit this button each time and turn it off when we're done. And it can be very easy to forget. So in this video, I'm going to show you some custom actions or custom behaviors so we could avoid all that. We could turn ripple editing off and still perform the same behavior. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the action menu and choose show action list. Then we're going to type into the filter time selection contents. And there's an action right here 
called remove contents of time selection, which is going to move the later items earlier. And we can see there's no shortcut assigned. Let's assign one to it. I'm going to use a bunch of modifiers and delete or backspace. Of course, you could use any keyboard shortcut you prefer. So with that action, we can create a time selection and trigger it. That's going to automatically remove the time selection we put in there, basically mimicking ripple editing all tracks before and after. And we can do it based on any time selection we want. Create one from here to here, hit that keyboard shortcut, and it removes all that space. But there is one problem with it. It only works on all tracks. So if you want ripple editing per track, we need to use a different action. Let's go back to the action list. And this time we'll type in cut selection. And we can see this action right here, cut selected area of items. And this already has a keyboard shortcut assigned. On the PC, it's control delete or backspace. And on the Mac, it's command delete or backspace. So it's already set up. So if we use this instead, with ripple editing turned off, hit that keyboard shortcut, and now it deletes everything within that time selection. But if you notice, it didn't ripple edit. So for this action, we want to turn on ripple editing. But just use ripple edit per track. As you'll see, we can get all track behavior even if we're using per track mode. So let's choose this. And with none of our tracks selected, if we hit that keyboard shortcut, it ripple edited all tracks based on our time selection. So we got all track behavior even though we're in per track mode. And if we want per track, all we have to do is select a track or a few tracks. Let's select the synth loop, use the same keyboard shortcut, and it just ripple edited this track, as you can see right here, before and after. Do the same thing with our piano, hit the keyboard shortcut, and it ripple edits just this track. Or our kick, it just ripple edits our selected tracks. So using this action, we can get either of the ripple editing modes behavior while using just the per track mode. But there's still one problem with this solution. We have to turn on ripple editing and turn it off later. That's where a custom action comes in. Let's go back to our action list and let's select the same action. Cut selected area of items. And then we'll create a custom action based on it. Go to new action, new custom action, and it puts it right here. So let's add some more actions to it. Let's type in ripple and go down to set ripple editing per track and put this before this one. Then go down to set ripple editing off and put it after that one. So with this custom action, it's going to first turn ripple editing on, then cut the selected area, then turn ripple editing off, making it so we never have to turn ripple editing on or off when wanting this behavior. Let's give it a name, ripple delete, hit OK, and here's the custom action we created. Let's give it a keyboard shortcut. I'll use the same one as before. So it's going to overwrite that one. And now, with ripple editing turned off, we could create a time selection right here. Hit that keyboard shortcut for the custom action. And it performed a ripple editing all track delete, all with one keyboard shortcut. And ripple editing is still off. So we got that behavior without turning it on. So let's undo this. 
And once again, if you want per track behavior, just select it for a synth loop, hit that keyboard shortcut, and it performed ripple editing per track behavior. Just on this track, or just on this track, undo it, or just on the kick, just like that. Now to make that custom action even more useful, I like to add a few other actions to it. Let's go back to the action list, choose it, let's edit it. Let's go to the filter and type in remove selection. And right here, we could remove our time selection right after the custom action. And also, let's type unselect and add in unselect all items and unselect all tracks. This will make this custom action a bit cleaner as it's going to remove our time selection and any selection on our items or tracks. And we could also consolidate the undo points. So this behavior will be considered one action. So now I can save it. And now with ripple editing turned off, we can create a selection, ripple edit all tracks with ripple delete, and perform that function for all tracks, but also removed any time selection or selected items or tracks, making the entire thing cleaner. Now there's one other thing I want to show you, because so far, everything I've shown you is useful for time selections. But what if we want to grab our items, like this one, and move it around, or this one? We might want to use ripple editing for that as well. And luckily, there's a trick for that as well. Let's go to our preferences, under options, preferences. And let's scroll down under editing behavior to mouse modifiers. Then we can go to media item. Left drag, and we can add a mouse modifier in here, either rewriting some modifiers over here or using the empty ones down here. But my personal preference is instead of using it in this context, is to switch it to media item bottom half. Because by default, there's nothing set up in here. Let's go to the default action and change this to move item, but add to it. Ripple edit all tracks. So now with this context changed, we can grab our items on the top half and they move normally. Or we could grab them on the bottom half and they're going to behave like ripple editing all track. Just grab it and all the items in our project that are in line or later move with it. So we could use that mode without turning it on or off up here. This can stay off. So we can grab the top if we want to edit it like normal, or if we want ripple editing, just grab the bottom. But as you can tell, that's only going to work with ripple all track mode. But we could add another modifier for per track mode. Let's go back to our preferences. And just choose a modifier we're not using. I'm going to use Control, Move Item, Ripple Edit this track, and now we'll get this behavior when we hold down this modifier. So now I could grab this item on the top to edit it like normal, or in the bottom to ripple edit it with all track behavior. We'll hold down the modifier. And ripple edit it with per track behavior. So it's very flexible based on where we place our mouse. And if we hold down a modifier or not. So as you can tell, there's a lot of ripple editing we can do, even if we leave off the ripple editing button, switching the modes on the fly. using custom actions or mouse modifiers. So that's pretty much it. That's some custom actions for ripple editing 
in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.